Russia's neighbours are rethinking their security. Finland has an 800 mile border with Russia and the country has always put security and defence first. It's always on standby for an invasion. So why is Finland always ready for a war? And how has Russia's invasion of Ukraine shifted the nation from neutral to NATO? We're going to talk about Finland's history and how Vladimir Putin's invasion of Ukraine has ripped up Helsinki's relationship with Moscow, meaning that Finland is now joining NATO, a truly historic decision that has not been taken lightly. But firstly, you need to understand just how prepared for any conflict Finland really is. Its defence planning has been in place for decades. They call it comprehensive security or total defence strategy. The state, society and the people are ready to defend against invasion. And one key part of this is conscription. While most European countries have stopped compulsory national service, Finland still uses it. It has 900,000 reservists available and it can raise a standing army of 280,000. That's 5% of its population. Civilians can also take courses with the National Defence Training Association, which provides programmes on things like cyber security, as well as military skills. Following the invasion of Ukraine, applications for courses with them went up tenfold, with the two most popular being shooting range training and anti-tank courses. And it's not just the people who are ready and prepared. Finland's infrastructure is built for defence and conflict. So basically all the residents have their designated uh, bomb shelters. There's always a someone uh, kind of responsible for the preparedness measures. Finland has 54,000 civil defence shelters that have space for 4.4 million people, most of the country's population. Any building that has a floor space of 1,200 square metres or more has to have a shelter. And it's not just apartment blocks or large houses. Lots of shelters are used as sports halls, swimming pools, car parks and metro stations. Every bridge in Finland is built so it can be rigged with explosives and demolished quickly to slow an advancing invader. And along with its military and its places for civilians to keep safe, there's a national emergency supply agency that stockpiles food and other resources, ensuring that Finland can be self-sufficient in a time of war. At the very uh, core of that thinking is really that it's not only the defence forces that have to be prepared. And remember, society is not just ready for war, it's ready for pandemics, natural disasters, cyber attacks, and preparation for all of that leads to better informed citizens. But back to the original question, why is Finland like this? Why is defence and security so central? Well, who better to ask about Finnish history than the Finnish ambassador here in the UK? When you look at the map and, and where we are uh, in the, on the European map and where we were in relation to the, the sides of the Cold War, it is quite understandable that our situation was rather uh, sensitive and precarious even. It comes back to Finnish history, particularly with its neighbour, Russia. Finland is a really modern country in the sense that it's only been independent for a century. Before that, it was part of the Kingdom of Sweden for hundreds of years, and then it became part of the Russian Empire in 1809. The Grand Duchy of Finland was a vital trading route for St. Petersburg, Russia's window to the west. But Finnish nationalism grew, and after the Russian Revolution, the country declared its independence in 1917. But the new nation and its population still feared its Russian neighbour, and they were right to. Peaceful Finland, that distant northern country of lakes and fjords, of sailing ships and summer bathing beaches, has been invaded and bombed. In 1939, just 20 years after independence, the Soviet Union invaded Finland. But, in seems reminiscent of Ukraine today, the Finns defied a much bigger army and prevented a quick victory. And Helsinki continues to defy Stalin. Soviet planes are shot down and their wreckage litters the ground in many towns and villages. A few months later, a peace treaty was signed. 24,000 Finns had been killed, but estimates suggest Soviet losses of 131,000 soldiers. If that outcome was a source of pride for Finland, what they did next left a dark mark in their history. Two days after Finland regrettably decided to throw in her lot with the Nazis in their fight against the Soviet, Finland allied itself with Nazi Germany. When Hitler invaded the Soviet Union in 1941, the government allowed the Germans to station themselves in their country. Finland managed to maintain its sovereignty despite the war, but it came at a cost, losing land to the Soviets and having to work with the Nazis. For the Finns, they remember that when the Soviets first invaded, they asked the Western powers for help and aid, but none came. The Winter War really reminded uh, of the situation uh, in Ukraine in many ways. There was a media uh, reporting on uh, 
the courageous fight of a small Finnish nation at the time. The Finns continue to defend their country against the Russian aggressor with the greatest valor and tenacity. But nevertheless, in the end, apart from humanitarian aid, there wasn't really that much uh, anything. We were prepared, but perhaps not prepared enough. Uh, and that's why, that is why it left a very deep mark in the national psyche. Having to fight on our own against Russia uh, is a bit of a trauma. But on the other hand, I would say that uh, Finland is a very pragmatic uh, nation. And Finland showed that pragmatism during the Cold War. Trapped between nuclear superpowers of the East and West, it adopted something called Finlandization, effectively remaining neutral. It signed a pact with the Soviet Union in 1948 that protected Helsinki from invasion. And in return, Finland would not join NATO. There was always a sense that you really had to manage the relationship with Russia very carefully. Where Finland used to strive for neutrality during the Cold War, in the last 30 years it has aligned itself more and more with the West. After the Soviet Union collapsed in the early 1990s, Finland joined the EU in 1995. We don't use the term neutral anymore when it comes to our security choices, because when uh, Finland joined the EU, we are not neutral anymore. But Finland had never considered joining NATO because it was seen as too antagonistic towards its biggest neighbour. But with Russia's invasion of Ukraine, there's been a clear shift in the mood. In February, only 28% of Finland supported joining NATO. Fast forward three months, and over seven out of 10 people wanted the country to be part of the alliance. NATO has always offered Finland an open door to join in the alliance, and Prime Minister Sanna Marin has consistently said that Russia's aggression has changed everything. People's mindset in Finland, also in Sweden, changed and shifted uh, very dramatically because of Russia's actions. A report by Marin's government says that being a NATO member would improve Finland's defensive capability. While there are risks, Moscow has said it will retaliate if the country joins NATO. The report doesn't go as far as saying there would be military action against Finland if it joined the alliance, but warns of increased tensions with Putin's Russia. And so Finland very much wants their joining of NATO to be seen as something that's mainly defensive rather than provocative. We are very concerned about the security situation in Europe and, and the war in Ukraine. We are certainly prepared and not surprised if some difficult action from, from Russia will take place during the next month. The mood in Finland is that the invasion of Ukraine has definitely shifted events. And Russia's threats of using nuclear weapons, weapons Finland can't really defend against, have strengthened the calls for NATO membership. But joining NATO doesn't mean that Finland will replace its total defence strategy. This is a nation roughly the size of Germany, but with 70 million fewer people. It has always felt a need to protect its territory from far more powerful neighbours. It's part of the national identity. And while NATO membership would make Finland more secure, its total defence policy means the country has always been ready for war and backed itself to win.